see me drink my Mountain Dew once that episode. <laughs> friends welcome back to Biblio Chic my name is Serena if you are new here and I like to make things welcome back to another episode of what's up stitches am I am I dating myself when I say what's up stitches because you know like what's up do people like say what's up anymore because um I do am I am I too old am I showing my elder millennial age you know what I don't care. I think it's cute. What's up, stitches? This is a space where we share our stitchery, what projects you are working on. I generally share my non-machine sewing projects because I have other videos for that. But a lot of you guys have been sharing what you guys are working on down in the comments below. And I love that you guys are doing that because you guys are giving me like ideas of what I want to do next. So keep the comments coming. So let's go ahead and get into it. Grab a snack, a drink today. I'm drinking the healthy Mountain Dew. At least it's a small can today because I ran out of coffee, but I need I need a little pick-me-up. Sit back and relax and let's get into it. So I'm going to share my needlework and then get into the knitting because knitting's fun. Needlework, although it's pretty, it takes a very, very long time. So here is my progress I think the last time and I need to put like a pin in these to show like how far I have gone I am collecting needlework I am using anchor wool tapestry wool and I hate it I've talked before I think this is probably like my third video that I've talked about how much I hate this but I bought a lot of it and I'm using it the reason why I hate it is because the wool the, the yarn thins out every time I pull it out. Oh well, I'm just gonna keep on complaining about it. Oh, and someone, so one of you guys suggested taking apart the fibers, like the two ply and making it one ply. I tried that and it still fall, it falls apart faster. So I honestly don't know what the solution to that is. I don't know if this is just like cheap plied, is that the word? Cheaply plied wool. If I need like tighter, tighter spun wool, I don't know. Or is this just a headache that generally needle pointers need her? <laughs> or is this just a headache that needle pointers just live with? I don't know. This is my first needle point project. Um, but here is my progress. It's a tedious pro progress, but I'm liking it nonetheless. I think my favorite parts is actually filling in between the birds. Now these are pre-worked. Uh, so this, I did not do these burrs. I did buy a series from Etsy, which I'll link down below. Pre-worked needlepoint. As much as I would have loved to make all of it, I am just doing the, the, the finishing touches of it. Okay, so I am actually going to put a pin in this. Hold up. I'm gonna put a pin in this because I think that is important. And I'll be like, hey, Look how much more I got this week. I have a new knitting project that is actually completed and you're like, Serena, you have a lovely, lovely scarf around your neck. Did you make that in one week? And I shall say yes. Yes, I did. Hyper fixation, my friends. <laughs> Basically, I wanted, a, I had a whole bunch of thrifted items that I wanted to turn into a Halloween-y themed outfit and I put this sweater on and it's like, ooh, I'm a little cold, you know, these little guys right here, they're cold and I need something around my neck. So I went through my yarn stash and pulled out two skeins of this lovely lavender lilac colored wool that I haven't actually thrifted this and I haven't shared that thrift haul, but I will here soon. I thrifted a whole bunch of 100% wool skeins from Goodwill. I know, Goodwill. I only had two skeins of it, so I went into Ravelry and I typed up vintage scarves and I put in worsted because it says it's worth. this is worsted. I had just under the amount of yardage that I needed for the Miss Marple scarf. And actually, this, this pattern from Ravelry is free. It is the Miss Marple scarf by Suzanne S. Dash VV, and I will link this down below. It was a super simple pattern that I followed. I am a newbie knitter, so I was able to do this. And it's basically you do shape the shaping by increasing and decreasing. And you, the only kind of tricky part was putting some stitches on hold to kind of decrease and make this tubey thing 
right here. You know what? Let me take this off and I'll show you this tubey thing. So basically you start at one end and then you shape it with increasing and decreasing and the pattern maker has you, once you're up to here, put on the some of the stitches on hold and you do one side of the tube and then you do the other side of the tube. I hope that makes sense. And then you bring them back together once you go up to here and you join them together. So that was a little tricky. I've never done that before, but I kind of figured it out. I, like I said, had just under the amount of yardage that this Miss Marple pattern calls for. I had 186 yards and this pattern calls for uh, 218 so I was definitely playing chicken yarn chicken by the end and I actually did both of the sides and I did both of the sides with the tube with putting those stitches on hold and I got probably up to here when I ran out of yarn so I was like crap I can't finish it so then I was like well why do we have tubes on both sides when you're only having to put one through the tube so I was like I bet if I take this tube off and just decreased it to the amount of stitches that it needed just for one side of the tube that I will probably make it and I did and when I say I was playing yarn chicken y'all this is how much yarn I had left of my two skeins this is another color I have in my stash I have a couple of these actually and I only have like two to three skeins so if you have any like worsted weight bulky weight stash busters is that what you guys call them that uh, uses up the smut the small amount we know like some free patterns maybe down below if it's if they're on Ravelry even better to my knowledge that this line of wool is our is discontinued but it's by Debbie McComer and it's their her Blossom Street line and it is 100% wool so it actually keeps me really really warm I want to make this again but maybe make it out of like a, like a silk blend a wool silk blend or a wool alpaca this is kind of it is a little itchy around my neck but I wonder if I wash it I mean, I already washed it once to, to block it out, but if I wonder if I wash it, it again, or I don't know, is that a thing with knitted things with wool? If like the more times that you wash it, the softer it gets. I know with regular fabric and linen it is. Like I said, I'm a newbie knitter, so I don't really know. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to wash wool that often because it, it has a tendency to felt up on itself, but I don't know. I would like to try to make this in a softer, a softer wool, maybe do some shaping on the neck. I like that you can fold it over, but it sometimes just doesn't stay there. So I wonder, uh, I don't know if I can play around with this pattern more, but for a freebie pattern and I love it. It's vintage. It's kind of like my vibe. So thank you, Suzanne, for offering your Miss Marple scarf for free for all Ravelry users. Like, I'll put that free pattern down below. And again, if you have any free patterns, especially vintage inspired knitting patterns or even sewing patterns, um, drop those down in the comments because I it seems like I've been spending a lot of money on patterns lately and if I can find some free ones, that's awesome. Not that I don't like, you know, supporting pattern makers, I do, but sometimes I go on like a pattern buying spree. Anyways, okay, that was my hyperfixation. I need something now. I'm going to stop knitting my other projects and, and work on that situation. I did this in a week. It's probably doable in a weekend. So if you need something really quick or you're like, I need a quick project, I need a quick win. I think the Miss Marple scarf is amazing for that. So, all right, so let's, let's bring over my knitting basket. I actually have two projects in this knitting basket. Okay, good news, my friends. I reordered that Valley Yarn Brookshire Bulky and I double checked and I got black. <laughs> Yay! So I am able to finish my mushroom sweater. If you don't know, I accidentally ordered two or three skeins of this this Heather Gray, which is which is not black. <laughs> so finishing up my mushroom sweater has been delayed. I did not get to finish it in in time for this week's What's Up Stitches episode, but I am nearly there. Here is my mushroom bulky 
sweater that I love. This pattern is from Rainbow Folk. I bought this pattern off of Etsy, but it is also in Ravelry if you are a Ravelry user. It is knitted up with bulky yarn. I ended up with this Valley Yarns their bulky weight and it's their mix of wool and alpaca. And I really like the alpaca. It's really fuzzy and it's really warm and I'm gonna love it during the winter time. I guess I should say my daughter's gonna love it because she's kind of commandeered it, but I'm gonna commandeer it back. What else is there to say? I finished the arm. One arm. I finished one arm. I am almost done with sleeve two. So I only have probably mm, five or six inches left. So hopefully by the time for was up stitches that I will have the rest of this, which I am going to be focusing on for tonight and tomorrow. So I'm going to finish this before I move on to my other knitting project that I have going on, which is my 1897 cycling sweater. This 1897 Butterick Cycling Sweater is a modern interpretation to the original pattern that was released in Butterick's Delineator magazine that was released, I think the first time it was in 1897, and then it was released several times after. I don't know if you guys ever looked at historical knitting patterns, and like I can barely read modern knitting patterns, you know, I don't, like, it might as well be hier hieroglyphics to me reading those historical patterns. But thankfully for us, the a, a kindly person named Kelsey Patton from, from Pearls of History Designs has kind of interpreted the original pattern into modern language. So thank you very much. I bought my pattern off of Ravelry again, um, but I think they're on Etsy as well. I mean, you kind of, if, if you're into historical clothing or history bounty, you kind of probably saw this pattern floating around. I feel like it floats around every fall and every winter because all of the history history bounders or the, the costumers just wear the heck out of this out of the sweater. And I want a sweater too. You can look at the Met Museum. They have an example of uh, the sweater. And also I think the DAR website also has an example of the sweater. And I have been on Pinterest a lot looking at the sweater and looking at other people's bicycle sweaters from this time period. And a lot of them have this cute little cheeky uh, stripes on them. And I didn't originally just like I didn't originally design this with the stripes, but I kind of want to put stripes in it now. I have probably about 10 more inches to decide whether or not I want to put stripes in it. Um, but this is how far this is how far I got. Uh, this pink this pink marker is where I left off the last episode, and so I've knitted a good four inches. This sweater is knit in pieces and from looks like from the bottom up. Mostly it is single ribbing all the way around. There is some shaping and use of the fancy stitch which is a basic basket weave stitch. So the yarn I'm using is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport Weight Yarn in Forest Heather and I now wish that I got some more. I think this this wool this wool yarn is Peruvian Highland wool, which is a pretty soft wool for it not being like merino or cashmere. I think it's really soft. It's not itchy at all. It feels really really good, and I know it's gonna keep me warm this winter. So I highly highly recommend. I think without a sale, this is I think three ninety seven around three ninety seven for one hundred and thirty seven yards in 5 grams of yarn. So really, really affordable. I think for 100% wool. So highly, highly recommend Knit Picks. I think, my friends, that is all I have going on right now. What do you have going on? I know someone said that they're working on a lace top, which I have not really done lace, and I really, really want to do some lace in the spring. So if you have any, like, free lace patterns, or not even free, if you have, like, really cool lace patterns that are kind of, like, history bounding, cottage corey, maybe even, like, fantasy core stuff, Drop them down in the comments below. I wish y'all good luck on any knitting stitchery adventure that you are on right now. I hope everything is going well. And thank you guys all for watching. You guys are awesome. I will see y'all in next week's episode of What's Up Stitches. Bye!
I didn't even drink my Mountain Dew once that episode.